Hey everyone, wanted to do a quick video with you on this uh, firearm that I have. You just saw the shooting video of it. Uh, what it is is a Berthier Carbine Model 1892, also known as the Mosquiton de Artillerie Model 1892. And you'll have to forgive me if my French isn't uh, up to speed. Um, so if I'm mispronouncing this, you'll have to give me some credit here. Um, this is a local uh, gun that I found at a local store and was real happy to, to pick it up. It's got a lot of history involved with it. It was made in 1895, uh, so it is uh, at this point 117 years old, so a lot of history. I'm going to have to make this video kind of quick because of that. really have a lot of things I kind of want to cover with it, but um, first thing I want to do is kind of touch bases on the history. Alright guys, uh, I'm not going to be claiming to be an expert on this. Like I mentioned, a lot of the information I have on this gun came from really great people online in the help forums and the gun forums. Uh, so I really credit them to a lot of this information. I tried to compile this information um, just for a quick reference for my own files. So uh, kind of bear with me as I read through here and just kind of give you some of the brief history of this. Uh, save you guys the time to have to go out and do that yourself. Um, the Berthier rifles and carbines were a family of bolt-action small arms and 8mm Lebel uh, used in the French Army from about the 1890s to the beginning of World War II or 1940. Um, the Berthier carbine was a five-round clip uh, and was again utilized by the French Foreign Legion and some colonial infantry and cavalry units including the, the uh, French Bahis. Um, specifically the uh, 1892 and model 1890 which is the most uh, common I think of the Berthier carbines that you'll find uh, were designated the Mesquiton Berthier and uh, this was a series of bolt action cavalry and artillery carbines with distinctly different actions from the older models that you'll find um, the, some of the differences was the the carbines bolts uh, lugs that locked the way they locked um, and some of the other changes that Emile Berthier, which was the engineer who came up with this this particular rifle, uh, made to it. Um, this particular Berthier carbine is a three-round model, which is a, uh, an earlier version. They actually updated it to a five-round model later on. Um, the Model 1890, though, is is one of the original Berthier carbines that you'll find. This, like I mentioned, is the Model 1892, which came out two years later. Not a lot of differences, but there are some differences to them. Some detailed specifications of the weapon. Uh, the length of the weapon, and I have to apologize. I have to apologize again for this. This is being in uh, uh, metric. I'm obviously in the United States, but the length of the weapon is 945 millimeters. Length of the gun with the bayonet is uh, 1,345 millimeters. I do have a bayonet with it, but I have a separate video out there if you guys are interested to jump out and check that out. Uh, barrel length is 450 millimeters, so it is a, a really small, short barrel, which is really cool. Um, when you hold this gun, it's like you're holding a toy. It's ridiculous. Uh, the weight is 3.1 kilograms. Uh, weight loaded with three rounds in it, with this particular case, would be 3.195 kilograms. Uh, it is an 8 millimeter or 8 by 50 R uh, label round. Um, the maximum effective range they have listed here is about 2,000 meters. And to tell you the truth, the bang and the size of the round that, that this uh, round has, I wouldn't doubt that one bit. Um, obviously, you're just kind of um, tied with as far as your sights and how good of a shot you are, I guess. All right, and then uh, just a quick history on the manufacture of this rifle. During the uh, pre-World War I time and during World War I mainly, uh, there were, I believe, three large manufacturers in France that uh, created these rifles. Um, one of them, which created this rifle, was the Manufacture des Armes of Châtelleraul, and that's C-H-A-T-E-L-L-E-R-A-U-L-T, -E -E um, commonly referred to as M-A-C or MAC. Um, it was a French state-owned weapon manufacturer in the town of Châtelleraul, and it was created in 1819 for the purpose of manufacturing swords, um, and then after 1850, they started producing firearms and cannons. Um, they created weapons all the way through World War I, um, and as late as, I believe, 1950 um, or 1968, I'm sorry, they closed. And they created a, a lot of different weapons there. Um, some of the ones that you may um, be familiar with would be the Mac 31, Mac 1934, Mac 1950, 
um, Mac 48 SMG. There's a few other weapons out there that they created that are kind of common on the on the military surplus uh, market. So, all right, guys, I wanted to do a quick disassembly video for you. Hopefully, that might help some of you out. Um, there isn't a whole lot of information out there except for written material. So, if you have one of these rifles, this might give you a little bit of assistance with getting it apart. Uh, where you want to start is a flathead screwdriver, and you want to start on the top of your gun. If this isn't like any other bolt action where you're able to pull out the the bolt just by you know pulling back on the trigger. What you actually need to do is start with um, unscrewing the bolt. There's a screw on the top of the bolt head, head lug nut here. And if you unscrew that, that bolt will or that uh, bolt will come completely out of the assembly there. At this point, what you want to do is keep your firearm to the rearward position here. Um, what we're going to essentially do is take this whole lug part off right there and what you want to do to do that is kind of keep it not all the way back but kind of in the middle position here and on the back end of the gun there's a little dial which you can actually do is turn that in a clockwise position and sometimes it takes a little bit of finesse to make sure you have it in the right position here and you're able to wiggle that and you'll notice I'm not sure if you're going to be able to see this here but as I do this, this whole lug in the front is actually turning itself free of the bolt assembly. And once you turn it a full uh, 45 degrees, essentially the bolt head here has now disengaged itself from the regular bolt assembly. And what you can do is pull back on the bolt, which takes the bolt carrier off, and then remove your bolt head or lug from the inside of your, your action there. So once your bolt is out, what, we, what we'll do is go ahead and quickly disassemble this for you. Um, what you want to do is take your bolt and decock it. Uh, if any of you are familiar with this process, uh, if any other bolts, it's pretty straightforward. You just turn it and turn it to the right. Um, once you have it decocked, what you're going to want to do is grab a, something soft like a piece of wood, like I have here. And at this point then, what you're going to want to do is push down on the bolt or on the firing pin here into this block of wood and what that's going to do is push up on this action here and you want to be very careful with this because this is under a lot of tension and once you do that all the way down you should be able to remove this piece right here and then you want to slowly decompress it back up. That's kind of the, the trade, the trick there. Uh, and then your pieces will come right out. Your firing pin and everything else that holds it together. And that's complete disassembly of the bolt. Um, to reassemble the bolt, it's exact opposite order. Again, using a, a block of wood like this is very helpful. And then being very careful. Oops, actually I can take the spring out here as well. There you go, and you got the spring in there because uh, that spring is going to be under a lot of, a lot of tension. So. so for disassembly of the rest of the gun, what we're going to do is on the right hand side of the, the gun, on the receiver, there is a screw. We're going to go ahead and remove that. Be very careful when you're removing this screw not to scratch the wood. Uh, make sure you have a, a screwdriver that's not too large for this screw. And you can go ahead and pull that large pin out. Once you do that, on the bottom, the floor plate, on the very rear of the floor plate, there is one screw. You can go ahead and remove that screw. Once you remove that screw, the whole floor plate should come right out. It is on a hinge right in the front port here, so once you pull it out, you do have to remove it kind of from the hinge itself. And the whole, as you can see, trigger assembly comes right out. That includes the mag well and the elevator clip here. Once you have that out, you can see the stock is pretty much empty. All we want to do is now remove this uh, barrel. First thing I like to do is remove the barrel bands. The first barrel band is held in place by a pin right here. Uh, if you can get either one of these screws to work for you or just uh, a punch or whatever you have available, go ahead and push that pin in and that first barrel band will come out. 
The second barrel band is a little bit more difficult and you want to be careful because of the fact that you don't want to scratch your wood and barrel. Uh, but it's held in by this just this leaf spring. Go ahead and gently coax that out if you can. Without doing too much stress on it. And that'll completely come off as well. At that point then what you want to do is go back to your floor plate. On the inside of the floor plate, on the rear position here, there is one large screw. That's pretty much the only screw you're going to see there. Once you remove this screw, the receiver and the barrel should com come completely apart from the stock itself, as you can see. And as you notice, this is a really small barrel. I mean, this is really what shows you how big this thing is. So, a really cool carbine. Uh, there are two remaining fork type screws on here. Would highly recommend not removing those. It takes a special type of uh, tool. And uh, it was actually advised against the French army from doing that themselves and to have an, an actual armor do that. Um, and, uh, you know, it's obviously to hold this whole part together so that it doesn't blow apart on you, I'm sure. All right, everyone, I thought I would finish up with uh, kind of the, the real details of the gun and going into what all the markings and everything else meant. Um, if you want to start on your left-hand side of the receiver, what you'll find is, uh, I mean, this will be visible without taking the gun apart, uh, is the manufacturer, Chateleiro, and the model, MLE 1892. There are a lot of variances from this. You can put a lot of, uh, there's a lot of different other things that you'll see uh, with this type of gun after that. Uh, generally classifying that this particular firearm had gone through some of the French Army modifications um, throughout, the, throughout the time. Uh, and those aren't, I'm not even referring to the ones that are to the 8mm LaBelle round. These are actually modifications to the actual gun. Um, this particular gun has no modifications to it. It is original from the factory, um, minus a couple of the replacement parts that um, inevitably had to go along with this gun throughout history. I'm sure it kind of broke apart through time. So uh, that's going to be your, your main identifier right there as far as what type of gun you have, the left-hand receiver. Moving down from the, the initial markings on the left-hand side of the receiver, what you'll have is... Um, the front left part of the chamber or start of the barrel I guess this is also visible um, on the gun without disassembly but you'll have uh, a couple proof marks there and then a uh, prefix number which stands for the manufacturer anything with the numbers A through E I believe is uh, signifies Chat the manufacturer Chatel Aero um, and then you'll actually have the serial number here and I got the last number blocked off there uh, what you're looking at the top marks there, the first large no letter you'll see is that C. That C represents the uh, provider of the steel. In this case, the company des Forges de Chateleon. Um, hopefully I'm pronouncing that right. Um, and then the second letter that you see there, which is a C circled, is going to refer to the um, supervising officer. In this case, uh, Chef de Escadron Bonaventure. Joseph Francois Camps. Um, hopefully I got that right. And then the third letter, uh, in this case a V circled, uh, stands for the final inspector or the principal arms controller, in this case Louis Verdun. Uh, so it's really kind of neat able to be able to tell all of the different people who've had a play in this gun. You're able to determine that. Um, and we'll find some more along this gun as well. Moving along, Along the bottom part of the receiver, this is actually something where you would need to take the gun apart to find. Uh, there are a couple more proof marks here that we can go through. Uh, starting at the top there, you're going to have a crown right at the very top, tippy top, right about there. Um, and that's just a, a, a crown to signify the company. Uh, the second letter you're going to find here is going to be a C. Uh, the C is the first, second, and third class controllers, largely in, in due of inspection of the barrel and proofing. Uh, then you're going to have an E. That first E is going to uh, be the primary proof of the steel, and uh, I'm sure that is the inspector for that. And then the second E is going to be the uh, final proof of the assembled weapon. And then again, you're going to find that that uh, proof mark C above that one as well for those first, second, and third controllers. 
Uh, down lower, you'll actually have a number, and this is going to be stamped on this gun, on every gun. It should be a number, and that will represent the month in which this gun was made. So, uh, it sh being a 7, it should be July, and being that it was stamped 1895, and we haven't gotten that far yet, uh, it was July of 1895. Moving down here, uh, you'll find some additional... Um, some markings there. I believe it's a C and A and another C, kind of in a diamond shape. Again, those are the first, second, and third class controllers. So uh, mainly due to just to kind of the inspection of the weapon along the way. So on the right side of the receiver, what you'll have are uh, the three letters M A C. Uh, you may find M A S. Uh, what M A C refers to is the manufacturer of the arms Chatelero, so it stands for the manufacturer. And then you'll have a, a stamped year, and this one being 1895. That is the year of the manufacturer uh, and when this gun was actually built. So that will be the only thing you'll really find on the right hand side of the receiver and barrel. One last thing to look for on the receiver and barrel is a stamp of an N, is in Nancy. What that would signify is that this gun was uh, went through the reboring and rechambering for the Bale uh, N, is in Nancy, 8mm Lebel round. If you don't understand that and you have this gun, you should probably jump out there and check that out on Wikipedia. Make sure that you're uh, familiar with 8mm Lebel round and what those uh, different Bale's are. But essentially it starts with Bale M as in Mary, goes to Bale D, and then the most important change uh, was the Bale N as in Nancy. Um, and if you have the Bale N uh, rechambering, again your, your receiver would have that N stamp in it. This gun does not, it was not part of the French arsenal when it went through that modification phase. So again, making it a little bit more rare I believe, uh, as from what I heard on the forum being that uh, again this gun wasn't in the French arsenal at that time so um, didn't get that modification which most guns did. The next thing that you can look for is on the bolt the bolt itself you'll be able to find the serial number etched on there uh, since these guns are so old uh, they actually did go through a lot of modifications and uh, obviously they broke down a lot so the armory would replace them what they would do is they would use an old bolt in this case you can see the numbers on the lower part of the bolt handle there are crossed off and then the the serial number for uh, the, the barrel that I have has been stamped on there uh, presumably by the French army or you know someone else later on at a, at a uh, some sort of manufacturing assembly plant. The next stop would be the floor plate. The floor plate should always be numbered as well. Uh, this particular floor plate is a replacement part as well. As you can see, it doesn't have the same serial number, but it does have a preceding uh, prefix of a B. I don't know if you're able to make that out. It is really lightly engraved there um, as part of the original numbers. There you go. Um, but as long as it's an A through E, again, that would be the manufacturer of Chatel Aero. Uh, so at least uh, it may be a replacement part, but it came from the same manufacturer at least. So uh, that's one thing to look for as well. Then the next stop with this particular firearm is the stock itself. Now, the stock here has definitely been replaced. Um, there is some... Uh, discussion as to what this stock originally was and if it was just uh, uh, original to this gun and then modified to be for a different gun or if it was a different gun and just had the old things in there uh, but I'll kind of discuss that slowly here um, normally what you would have on the uh, left hand side of the gun or the right hand side of the gun on the stock in this area would be their uh, serial number that would match against that of the, the firearm. I don't actually have one here and I'm not able to make out anything previously being there except for maybe a little bit of scratching here which you know I don't think there was anything stamped there at all. Uh, what you kinda wanna do with the stock identification is look at the different features of the stock. Um, this particular one has no serial numbers or no identifiable marks except for an N127 on the inside, which uh, presumably from some of the people who've helped me out is just a uh, probably an inspector of some sort. Um, from what I've been told, uh, this stock is probably a modified Carabine de Cavalerie Model 1890 Type 2, and I probably just destroyed that, that name of that firearm. Uh, but they started in 1894, um, and, and really what it, it, it comes down to is the fact that it has this sidebar mount sling instead of an underslung 
uh, sling adapter and as you can see this one's been filled in which kind of leads us to believe that this is probably an older stock for the original gun that I have it just was modified for a different type of firearm later on uh, it's really hard to tell without any kind of identifiable numbers on it uh, the other difference is um, the rear barrel band uh, that comes along with it is, is a little bit different in where it sits on the gun itself so uh, there are several, a couple of minor differences between it, but otherwise this is pretty much standard what you'll find for the original Berthier carbine model 1892 um, to some extent. There's not a whole lot of differences there to the original. One last thing I learned about this particular gun is the rear barrel band is not original to this original model of uh, Berthier. Uh, this one was a um, another rear barrel band that would have matched a Carabine de Cavalerie model 1890 Type 2, which is exactly the same as the stock. Um, the original barrel rear barrel band for this Berthier Carabine model 1892 would have had just a small little ring here with a large ring adapter attached to it. Um, for for a uh, sling so a little bit of difference um, but this particular one obviously worked better with the stock being that they were matching stock and barrel band uh, so it probably assembled on the gun a little bit better than the original I'm assuming one thing to make note of is these particular rifles did go through a lot of um, upgrades and modifications in the army uh, the French army um, surplus and one of those was the, the filling of the cleaning rod. I didn't get a cleaning rod with this particular gun, unfortunately, but the cleaning rod has not been filled, which would lead us to believe it wasn't in the uh, French Army arsenal at the time of those modifications. Another modification that would have gone through would have been um, a stacking hook attached to the end here, where the kind of off the side of where that um, uh, bayonet lug is, it would have just kind of came off here, just a little stacking uh, hook. Uh, that, that particular modification was not made to this gun as well. As you can see, all I have there is the original bayonet lug. Um, so it's kind of neat that it, uh, it's pretty much an unmodified Berthier carbine, excluding the fact that um, obviously the stock and the rear barrel band is, is different than the original Berthier carbine. Um, but ultimately, uh, it, it has those um, unmodified values to it, as well as the... Um, the receiver and the barrel not being rechambered re or re uh, rebored, so kind of a kind of a cool uh, history fact on this particular carbine that it wasn't in the French arsenal at the time of those modifications, uh, which would lead me to believe it was probably uh, sent to one of the um, emerging uh, countries out there pre-World War One, maybe Serbia, something like that, uh, and used in their armies. Uh, that's pretty much it for this gun. I hope you guys enjoyed. If you have any questions, feel free to let me know. Otherwise, uh, like I said, hope you enjoyed and take it easy. Thanks, guys.